Tonight, a father armed with a machete holds his young family hostage. A motorist fights for life after a brutal road rage carjacking. A mum's relief as her son is found after a freezing night lost in the bush. Also, Greece rejects an economic bailout, sending Australian shares into a $30 billion tailspin. Panic as a pram rolls onto tracks in front of a freight train. And the royals enjoy a family day out for Princess Charlotte's christening. Live from Melbourne, this is 7 News with Peter Mitchell. Good evening. A father armed with a machete has held a woman and two children hostage in Melbourne's west. Christy Cooper is in Tarnit this evening. And Christy, is everyone OK there? Thankfully, Peter, yes, they are. Police say the woman and children were traumatised when they were finally allowed out of the house, but we did see the children a, a short time... A thug has been jailed for 18 months over a sickening pub attack on Grand Final Day. That's ahead on 7 News. Also, beach panic as a small plane plunges towards sunbathers. A windy welcome for the Pope in South America. And I'll let you know when some warmer weather will return soon. A man's been jailed for 18 months over a sickening assault in a pub on Grand Final Day last year. Richard Commuters Clark. had the worst of the weather today with showers hitting both the morning and evening peaks. Jane Bunn joins us now. And Jane, what can we expect tomorrow? Mish, tomorrow is actually looking better than what we experienced today. We woke to the patter of rain on the roof as this area of widespread showers crossed the city. It took until mid-morning to clear eastwards, but this was enough to deliver a small top-up to the rain gauges. Most western and northern suburbs recorded two to five millimetres, with a wetter spot being Coburg. There wasn't as much in the far south and east, just a millimetre here and there. At 7am in the city, it was a mild 9 degrees, but the wet weather soon let that tumble. Down to 8 by 8am and just 7 at 9am. So it got colder as the morning went on. We took a break from the showers in the middle of the day, but it only reached a top of 11 and a half. And the showers returned, with a new band of them arriving late in the afternoon. Now, there is even more to come tonight, but it does look better tomorrow. I'll have those details soon. Mitch. Thanks, Jane. A cruel con man who preyed on elderly motorists has smiled as he was sent to jail. That's ahead on 7 News. Also, a warning about the pitfalls of going gluten-free. And a driver walks away from a spectacular speedway fireball. Good luck with that one. Tonight's sport is next with Tim Watson. And, Tim, there's mixed news for the Tigers tonight. Yes, there is, Mitch. Good to have you back after your mid-season bye, too. <laughs> the captain's in the clear, but a star big man has fallen foul. The match review panel. And why Tiger uh, Carlton fans are scratching their heads tonight. Also, a defiant James Hurd stands his ground. There's no indication from the club at all that I'm under pressure. The Cats prepare to welcome back a forgotten favourite. A goal from halfway helps the US clinch soccer's World Cup. And I've got the forecast for this week of school holidays. Welcome back. Under fire coach James Hurd has called on the Essendon board to hold its nerve after yesterday's historic loss to St Kilda. And with key club power brokers away overseas, Hurd is safe for now. James Hurd was back on the bike and pushing through another crisis. Morning after, Hurdy. I mean, what's the mood like? Is, is it shell shock at the footy club at the moment? I wouldn't say shell shock. We're very disappointed in the way we played and we've obviously got a lot of work to do um, with our team. But, um, yeah, shell shock is a big word. But, you know, losing the way we did last or yesterday is uh, very disappointing. Finals aren't even on the radar. You know, we're not obviously thinking about finals after the performance yesterday. We're thinking about trying to get our game back and looking for the players that will play the right way. Pressure on yourself, James. I mean, um, people are just suggesting even you mightn't last a week. I mean, you've oh, been through a lot. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. I've, look, I don't think it's about pressure on myself. As I said in the press conference, I just want the players to play and um, play the best of their ability. Hurd's adamant he still has the support of the board. There's no indication from the club at all that I'm under pressure. And, you know, hopefully the club sticks to its guns and, and we'll go forward and try and beat Melbourne. Essendon chairman Paul Little is in Italy and not due back until next week. His deputy, Paul Brasher, is also away. There's a scheduled board meeting next week, but Hurd is certainly safe for now. 
Heard met with skipper Joe Watson about his form as the club picked through the wreckage of an historic loss. Players have bad days and Joe's been through a lot. So, you know, we'll, um, we'll have a chat this morning and get to the bottom of it. Watson said he believed Heard was definitely the right man for the job. I do, I do. Um, but at the moment, there's a lot of us who are underperforming and um, we have to work out a way to um, rectify because uh, yesterday obviously wasn't uh, wasn't acceptable. Are you 100 percent Joe at the moment, fitness wise? Yeah, I mean, whenever you go out there, you're 100 percent. And Chief Football Reporter Mark Stevens is live at AFL House. And Steve-O, there was plenty for the match review panel to sort through today as well. Absolutely, Tim. A busy day. And I'll start with the Tigers. Trent Cochin has escaped with a $1,000 fine for his late spoil on Saturday. Teammate of Arm Marich, not so lucky. He's copped a week for his clumsy act in the ruck, so he misses this week's big clash. And from the same game, Toby Green can accept a $1,500 fine for this spitting incident. Now, Essendon's woes also continue. Mark Bagley has copped one week. And there'll be plenty of people scratching their heads over this one. Jay Schultz has escaped for this tackle on Ted Richards at the SCG a fortnight after Bryce Gibbs copped two for a very similar tackle. Gibbs has just tweeted, I'm confused. And you know what, Tim? I'm confused too. Back to you. Steve-O, I'm confused too. Still on footy and Cats captain Joel Selwood is adamant that a 20-day break between games won't jeopardise Geelong's finals hopes. Selwood also revealed that Daniel Menzel could make his long-awaited return from a fourth knee reconstruction this weekend. After another week off football, the Cats are in holiday mode. None more casual than Tom Hawkins. Oh, it's a Monday. <laughs> We live in Geelong. <laughs> Geelong supported the AFL's decision to cancel yesterday's match against the Crows. We didn't expect those players, the Adelaide players, to go out and play on the weekend and um, with what they'd been through throughout the week. But it's been a big break. After their shock loss to the Demons, the Cats enjoyed a week off for the bye. Then their trip to Adelaide was cancelled, meaning all up it will be 20 days between matches. The Cats showed compassion, agreeing to split the four points with the Crows, but it puts them behind the eight ball to make the finals. Yeah, it does. I mean, but we, we know that we can win all games going forward, so that's what we've got to concentrate on and that's what we will be. It's been almost 1,400 days since his last AFL game, but finally injury-prone forward Daniel Menzel is in line to return in the VFL on Saturday. Daniel Menzel will train this week and see how he goes, see how he pulls up. Um, but, yeah, hopefully this weekend we'll see him out there. After missing two and a half months due to knee surgery, Jimmy Bartell is a certainty to make his return on Saturday night against the Kangaroos. But James Kelly is still touch and go. Hawks star Jared Ruffhead has returned to the club for the first time since his skin cancer scare. His spirit's pretty high. He was in this morning um, getting around, so um, I think the, one of the best medicines is to be back around the group again. Collingwood's been strongly linked to GWS young gun Adam Trelaw, but it's believed Richmond and North Melbourne are now both willing to offer him a lucrative six-year deal. And Travis Cloak has made a surprise visit to his number one fan. Knock, knock. Sorry to interrupt, but I'm after a pretty special person. One-eyed magpie Emily Pope with a priceless reaction. Sean Sowby, 7 News. Australian fast bowler Pat Cummins is on his way to the UK after getting an Ashes call-up to replace the retired Ryan Harris. I do feel like um, it's a step up isn't as big as it, it might have been a year or so ago and um, certainly feel ready for that step. The first test begins on Wednesday. Aussie tennis ace Nick Kyrgios has dismissed speculation he'll boycott this month's Davis Cup tie against Kazakhstan in support of suspended teammate Bernard Tomic. Tomic was axed from the team yesterday after being highly critical of Pat Rafter and other tennis Australian officials. And Kyrgios headlines our Wimbledon coverage tonight with a fourth round showdown against Frenchman Richard Gasquet. The match is exclusively live across on 7-2 from 8.30. Daniel Ricciardo's forgettable F1 season has continued with the Aussie driver forced to retire on lap 22 because of engine problems. It was an action-packed race at Silverstone, which became more chaotic when rain arrived. But nothing could stop Mercedes driver Lewis Hamilton as a Brit won his home Grand Prix for the third time. Australian Rowan Dennis relinquished the leader's yellow jersey in stage two of the Tour de France. 
Fellow Aussie Adam Hansen hurt his shoulder in a crash but rode on through wet conditions in the Netherlands. Andre Greipel took out the stage with Swiss champion Fabian Cancellara, the new race leader. The United States has won the Women's Soccer World Cup after thumping Japan 5-2 in the final. And here they come again, the long-range effort from Lloyd! Oh, my goodness! With one of the most incredible goals you're ever likely to see. It was a glamorous presentation as America lifted its third World Cup trophy and the nation's first since 1999. And a golfer in America was forced to complete his round without a putter after breaking it on the front nine. Robert Streb used a sand wedge on the greens with impressive results. Can he wedge it home for the tie? <laughs> he can. Yes. Oh, are you kidding me? He finished tied for the lead but went on to lose in a playoff to New Zealand's Danny Lee. Streb did, however, collect more than $600,000 in prize money which is more than enough, Mitch, to buy yourself you can do without a, a new... Indeed, why not? Now, before you go, Tim, we've just got to ask you a question about James Hurd. He's endured a lot of pressure over the years. Uh, how's he looking at the moment, do you think? Well, Mitch, you'd have to say they wouldn't want too many losses like that at the weekend, but uh, there is no move afoot at the club to change their coach at this stage. OK, Tim, thank you very much. Jane's next with the weather, and, Jane, the winter chill is really starting to bite. Yes, Mitch, but the next few days are looking up. I'll have the details after the break. This weather report brought to you by Beacon Lighting Stock Take Sale. Hello again. Showers and grey sky made it pretty chilly today. The coldest point was around 9am when it dropped down to 7 degrees. Then we only reached a top of 11 and a half. And at the moment outside it is back down to 9. We've now recorded 3 millimetres in the city and 8 so far this July. Showers passed through this morning. Then we took a little break but the sky remained grey before further showers late this afternoon. Most suburbs only reached 11 or 12 but it was just 7 at the top of Mount Dandenong. This bound we can see here is clearing, but there are more showers to the west of us ready to sweep through tonight. And this is how it looked in Geelong before the second wave of showers hit. The sky was quite dark, looking out over Cryo Bay, but the sun did pop out just before it set over Docklands and created an interesting circle in the sky at the airport. It was a top of 17 in Mildura, but only 7 today in Ballarat, thanks to this very slow-moving band of showers just in here. Further showers developed in the west under this trough line, some big enough to grow into thunderstorms and lots in Gippsland as well. High pressure still covers much of the nation, but the weak low has picked up some tropical moisture, pushing wet weather over the southeast. It's very cold. In fact, the air over Tasmania today was over Antarctica last week. The low will slowly dissipate overnight, leaving us with this large ridge of high pressure overhead. So most parts of Victoria will enter a dry stretch of weather while that high does linger. But it won't last. A front pushes through on Friday, followed by a strong one on the weekend and the potential for another strong one early next week, so a lot of rain on its way. And 500 metres is the snow level on Saturday. Now, it may change a bit by then, but this gives us an idea of just how cold Cold next weekend will be. Around the nation tomorrow, showers in most capitals and they're most frequent in Perth, top of 19. To Victoria, isolated showers remain over Gippsland and also across the far northwest. Otherwise, it does look dry for tomorrow. It's cool to cold and there are light winds, top of 12 in Bendigo, so it'll be a couple of degrees warmer than today. Closer in and that's the end of the wet weather. Once this clears out early in the morning, it's dry across Melbourne tomorrow. Eight overnight in the city with showers clearing. It's dry tomorrow and right up to 14 degrees. To the eight-day outlook, our dry stretch includes Wednesday and Thursday too. Wednesday, right up to 15. I'm actually expecting a fair bit of sunshine in there. And Thursday, still dry, a top of 14. Then the next system hit. It will be front after front after front, and that will make it feel very cold. It'll be coming straight up from Antarctica. I'm expecting 12 on Saturday and for Sunday, then 11 next week, starting to clear on Tuesday. But we look dry tomorrow, mostly cloudy in the morning, then mostly sunny in the afternoon, a warmer 14. Mitch? Thanks, Jane. And that's the way it is this Monday, the 6th of July. Thanks for your company. I'll be back with updates later. For now, from the 7 News team, good night.